Wires from the implant were then threaded through a cable beneath the skin, exiting further up the arm to an electronic connector. Effectively what we've got is a link from my brain down the median nerve, through the wires and out to the connector. And then in the weeks ahead we'll be putting on our, our radio transmitter receiver that we've developed at the university and that will be making the link by radio from my nervous system to the computer and back the other way. This is what everyone hopes to see, nerve signals resulting from finger movement or even emotions. The medical aim is to help people who are paralysed, although some experts are unconvinced. But Professor Warwick is used to detractors, and experiments linking his nerves to a computer will begin soon. Sue Nelson, BBC News. So, just to be clear, I didn't have to have this for medical purposes. It was a research project, and the surgeons involved, there were four surgeons, um, Amjad Shad, I'm still working with him directly now. This was at the, the John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford. I, even from the surgical point of view, it was a research project because at the time the implant we used hadn't been used in a human. So the surgeons had to learn how to fire it in, um, how to keep it there and so on and so forth. This was the implant that was used. Um, 100 electrodes. Uh, the electrode tips actually are about one to three micrometers, which is the sort of order, neurons are two to up to about 20 micrometers, so it's that sort of size. These are silicon shafts to, to keep the electrode tips. Um, these are about one and a half millimeters long, and the whole nerve fibers, the median nerves, which are the main bunch of nerve fibers that run from your brain down to your hand, the whole bunch of nerve fibers is about four millimeters in diameter, so they're very, very small. But this went, this was actually fired in mechanically, a little pneumatic hammer, about halfway. So it's like putting a plug in an electric socket, but of course there was no socket. This had to be just hammered into the, the nervous system. <coughs> so that when I moved my hand, we could pick up neural signals, and we, but we could also send signals down into my nervous system to stimulate my brain. Um, this is a, I'm sorry if you have had lunch already, this is just a trip away from. Uh, this is my arm at the time of the operation. What the surgeons had to do to make two incisions, they then pushed the metal rod down to create a tunnel, because you don't have tunnels in your arms normally. And then they pushed this tube down the, the tunnel. The electrodes, they could then, the 100 electrodes, they could then push down the tube, remove the tube, hammered the electrodes in place. I then had wires running up my arm onto this connector pad. So these little terminals here were directly connected into my nervous system. So we could either measure the neural signals when I move on these terminals, send them into the computer to get things to happen, or we could push current down into my nervous system that I could learn to recognize. Some of the things that I could do on a discovery video. One man in tune with technology is the world's first cyborg. Part man, part machine. <laughs> Kevin Warwick, cybernetics professor at Reading University, England, took a leap into the future as long ago as 2002. For three months, a silicon chip was implanted into the nerves in his arm. At that time, no human had had an implant of this type before. It was a procedure that until then had only been tested on chickens. Would the body reject it? Would it affect the way I moved or my sensory capabilities? I could have lost the use of my hand. Could it affect my brain? Ultimately, could it have sent me crazy? Kevin was plugged into a computer which monitored the nerve signals from his brain to his arm, receiving and transmitting them as radio waves. With the signals from his brain, Kevin could not only turn on lights, he could control a wheelchair. And from 5,000 kilometers away via the internet, he succeeded in getting a robot hand to mimic his own hand movements. His most impressive experiment involved his wife, Irena, also having a chip implanted in her arm. The communication experiment between myself and Irena was vitally important to me. This was the highlight of the whole experiment. Kevin wanted to discover if it was possible for his brain to receive and feel signals from Irena's brain. 
when Irena first moved her hand, it actually felt like a charge running up my index finger. It was a phenomenal feeling. Literally, every time she moved, my brain received a signal. There we were communicating for the first time in the world, nervous system to nervous system. It was the first time two people had electronically communicated by thought alone. In the short term, we're going to see implants used to help people who are paralyzed switch on lights, operate the TV, just by thinking about it. In 30 years, he believes we'll all have chips in our brains. But ultimately, having extra memory, having downloads from the computer, uploading from the brain. Earth is going to be controlled by cyborgs. Humans are going to be something of a subspecies. We'll be half man, half machine. With super memory, super senses and superpowers. I think quite clearly that's where we're going. Superhuman. Um, I'm, I'm conscious of the time, so I'll just conclude with a couple of holiday snaps, as it were. Um, this is uh, ultrasonic sensors that were used to feed down to stimulate my brain to the extent if something came close, I was getting lots and lots of pulses of current, and if something moved away, so the pulses died away. So I was either blindfold on, I was able to move around and detect objects. It's the sort of thing for therapy could be used to help somebody who's blind, not, not to get rid of the blindness at all, but to give them a different sense. But for everybody, it's, it's an extra sense, or at least extending the sensory range in terms of ultrasonics. It's actually a good, gives you a good sense of distance and when things are moving a little bit further away or a little bit closer. This is um, my wife uh, took part in spread in a number of ways. The jewellery was put together by a student at the Royal College of Art in London, and it changes colour from red to blue. It was linked to my nervous system. One part of the experiment, if I got excited, the jewellery started flashing red, and if I was calm, the jewellery was, as you see, it was blue. Now, she works in a different place to me. She didn't work in the university, so you can imagine, there she is, her jewellery is blue, okay, he's not doing anything he shouldn't, and then <laughs> the jewellery starts flashing red, what is he doing? And, and more importantly, who is he doing it with? So, I don't know whether it's such a good idea. It's the wearable computing, which is very good for us now. This is in Columbia University, in New York. Any of you seen the Ghostbusters? This is, is filmed at Columbia University. Real-time computing lab, put my nervous system live on the internet. It even had an IP address. Um, we then linked up via the internet to the robot hand back in Reading, here in the UK. I moved my hand in New York, my neural signals went across the internet to move the robot hand in the UK. When the robot hand gripped an object, signals went back across the internet to literally stimulate my brain in New York. And what I was trying to do was to get the robot hand to just grip an object, which was very successful. So it's the sort of thing that could be useful for somebody that's had their hand amputated to have an arm replaced. But again here, the arm doesn't have to actually be attached to your body. It can be somewhere completely different. You get a slight time delay, but, but we have a slight time delay down the body anyway. It is about a third of a second uh, from your brain. It can take about a third of a second to blink, I think. Um, the, this is my, my well, last part of the experiment. What my wife had were electrodes pushed into her nervous system from the outside, small wires. You try this tonight. Um, you, if you just push wires into your, I didn't really say that, push, push <laughs> wires into your nervous system, you will find it's extremely painful. And, uh, she, she, we thought, she thought we're gonna have, she was going to have some anaesthetic, but the doctor said, no, 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 I need to make sure I've made a good contact. So he pushed the electrode in, she screamed, and the doctor said, yeah, I think we've made a good contact. <laughs> uh, we went back to the lab electrically joined our nervous systems together. So when...